we are discussing about to how to approach a patient of respiratory disease towards this approach i have already discussed you how to take history now after the good history a good clinician should be able to know about the diagnosis and if you are not able to know one diagnosis well you have to know about the differential diagnosis but uh, the indicator of good history i must have told on previous occasion that uh, if you have taken history adequately completely then it should address finally about what is the provisional diagnosis if you cannot think of one you may think of two three diagnosis that you call it as differential diagnosis then after a good history the next part comes while approaching uh, to a patient of respiratory disease is the examination and uh, as i always say that examination consists of three issues the first thing is the general examination the second thing is the systemic examination but in systemic examination from the history you are aware that which system is involved so the, that system should be examined first and what do you mean by this examine first means you have to spend more time on the examination of the system which appears to be involved from the history and then then the third part of the examination i always say is the rest of the other system so that is how we go for examination now let us talk about the general examination i'll not go much of the details but what i wanted you to know that the general examination although in your case sheets there are many points which are written but as a as a clinician what i usually teach my students that uh, you should know according to the case according to the system involved uh, what are the points in general examination which are very important even if you have a less time so you should not miss those points that's the idea since here today our interest is a respiratory system so naturally question is that what are the points in general examination which are very important which you should never miss and uh, another way of knowing this what are the important issues many times when you present your general examination you say many negatives so probably those negatives are important issues in the general examination like uh, if you do a general examination what i always say you have to do everything what is written in your case sheet but then you have to know that what is the important issues and what is their importance like uh, in general examination any any patient if i examine first as a general examination what i see i i would like to know his orientation is he oriented to time place and person question is what could be the importance in respiratory system you know the when patient is in hypoxia or in no hypercapnia these may be deranged patient many times we have seen you have entered into ward and pa patient uh, he started behaving differently abusing you sometimes fighting with you so as a clinician you have to understand that this is a this is something is happening with his is his consciousness with his orientation and there as a clinician you should suspect that it, whether my patient is in respiratory failure otherwise for which you need abg and other things but even by the general examination of just overall impression of the patient you can know that yes my patient may be in the respiratory failure so start from orientation means he must be oriented 
to time, person and space, that's the usual question we ask. Then after the orientation, what next is important in general examination? Next is important, as you say, whenever you present any respiratory case, you say, sir, there is no cyanosis, there is no clubbing. It means it is very important. If there is a cyanosis, if there is a clubbing, your differential diagnosis will be pruned down. Suppose somebody has clubbing and if you know the respiratory causes of clubbing, so you can prune down your differential diagnosis. If I ask, if I say that what are the respiratory causes of clubbing, respiratory causes of clubbing mostly is it involves the separative lung disease like, uh, like bronchiectasis which is very common, lung abscess. Empyema, these are the three separative lung diseases. Suppose you got a clubbing in your general examination and if you are suspecting out of any of these three conditions, so your differential diagnosis would be become very obvious. Cyanosis, of course, it deals with the management. As I said that history and physical examination is not only for diagnosis, sometimes it can help in your management also. If somebody is cyanosed, so question is this, if somebody is cyanosed and you have not examined him and you, saw, you say, sir, there is no cyanosis, it means you are probably you are committing a crime. Probably you are committing a crime. So, why these points are important that why they say no, 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 it means you have to examine those points even if you have a less time. So, cyanosis, clubbing, now question, what else in general examination may be important? General, in general examination, next may be important about the swelling over the feet. How the swelling over feet is, is important for respiratory physician is that you know that many of our respiratory patients, they may slip into the car pulmonary and uh, they, may, they may develop, it means they may develop a congestive heart failure and most of the signs of congestive <coughs> heart failure are extra cardiac. So, you have to go into the periphery and find it out and one of them is swelling over the feet. If suppose somebody comes to you with the swelling over the feet, we know that the, there are hundreds of causes of swelling over feet like anemia, hyperproteinemia, liver disease, kidney disease, but one of the causes as a respiratory clinician, we should always keep in mind is it is it a congestive heart failure because of the lung diseases? Because why it is important to detect? It is important to detect because the management will differ. A patient of a COPD who has come without congestive heart failure, a patient of a COPD who has come with the congestive heart failure, the ultimately the management will, will differ. So, that is why these points what I am telling to you are very important to a clinician either to make diagnosis or to make the, make the management issues. Then another point which is very important which we have seen many of the students they default is the lymph nodes. Lymph node is another way what you say in, in your general examination most of the students are in habit that, that, that there is no significant lymph adenopathy. But I always say when we use these words there is no significant lymphadenopathy, what you are supposed to examine at least cervical, axillary and inguinal. So, these three groups of superficial groups of lymph node, they must be examined thoroughly before you say <coughs> sir, there is no significant lymphadenopathy. I would uh, narrate you a very small patient, a very small case which uh, might uh, compel you to think that this is very important. Uh, uh, I remember in 90s I was sitting in my OPD, some of the employee of KGMC came to me uh, with an x-ray chest and uh, he asked me that some of the professor of medicine ask my opinion about the x-rays. So, I said I saw the x-ray and I found that the x-ray is normal. So, I said to him 
X-ray is normal, but then I ask another question to him, why you are showing me the X-ray? What is the problem with your wife? So he, he said, sir, my wife is suffering from fever for last six weeks. So I said, well, X-ray is normal because you know, it's a rule if somebody had pyrexia under observation, X-ray becomes mandatory in that way the X-ray was done. But X-ray was normal limits. So, I said X-ray is normal, whether respiratory system is normal or not, I cannot tell without examining the patient. That, that you can understand what is the importance of examination. Next day, uh, he came with his wife and uh, when I examined him thoroughly, means when I said examination means, first I will examine the general examination. I just put my hands over the supraclavicular, over the cervical area. And I could find the only finding in that lady was a single isolated lymph node in the right supraclavicular area. A young lady who had a lymph node, isolated lymph node in supraclavicular area, which is form, which is not hard, likelihood is the diagnosis is tuberculosis. So, I got FNAC done and it proven to be tubercular and uh, I know his fever has subsided. Now, question arises and uh, then I asked that gentleman, uh, how many doctors have seen your wife before me? He said, sir, you are the sixth one. So, what has happened? What, ha what, what those five, five physicians did? They did as you say in your MBBS classes that, sir, there is no significant lymphadenopathy. So, they are just uh, repeating those sentences without examining the lymph node. And in that lady, I think the sole manifestation of a disease was only finding in general examination. No other, ex I have just said x-ray was normal. So, what I am trying to say that these points are very important. That, uh, lymph node, many times you do not examine those lymph nodes and you are in habit of saying, sir, there is no significant. I have seen in my own clinical practice, this is a very important for a respiratory clinic. I have diagnosed many patients of lung cancer, tuberculosis like thing only by uh, sticking to this point that I have to examine the lymph node in general examination. I have already talked to you when I say lymph node means it is not only cervical group, it is all the three groups must be. So, lymph node is another point in general examination which is very important. Then in general examination of course, for this system you examine the nose, you examine the throat, you examine the oral cavity for any problem in this situation. Like I, 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 I always say you must examine the nose as a clinician. I was telling, I have seen many patients in my own life that they are just suffering from deviated nasal septum, has a deviated nasal septum, which you can at least have some idea. Finally, the answer will come by X-ray PNS and ENT exam, good ENT examination, but as a clinician, you can have some idea that either this nasal septum is straight or deviated and that deviated nasal septum may be linked with the respiratory symptomatology. So, you will be ultimately able to, I still remember many cases where they, they presented to us like asthma, like COPD and they had very severe DNS and when, when those DNS were surgically corrected and most of their symptoms have disappeared. In fact, they do not have asthma, they in fact, they do not have COPD, but, but they have because of this, they have a symptoms like a, asthma and COPD. So, that is general examination means this that you have to look over, overall what are the other issues about which can help me in making the diagnosis. So, these are the major issues in general examination which you usually so I said orientation, I said what else? Orientation ke baad? Sinosis, clubbing, lymph node, swelling over feet, oral cavity, nose, throat, there are many issues. We have seen many patients of hemoptysis where there was ulcer 
into the oral cavity and that was bleeding and that how the patient presented with us. You must have heard the pseudo hemoptysis means the, when the source of blood is above the larynx. It may be from gingiva, it may be from teeth, in any, any gum may bleed, any teeth may bleed and that you can find out from the good general examination. So, what I am trying to say that general examination has its own role to play. If somebody has come to in your OPD and his extra, his, his extra respiratory muscles are working. So, you can, you can find it out from then and there yes that he has some problem in the respiratory system. So, what I am trying to say the first part of the examination which is general examination is very important. People feel that it may not be important just say there is no cyanosis, there is no clubbing, there is no lymphadenopathy. So, that will not work and I always say suppose you say there is no cyanosis, suppose you say there is no clubbing. That is why I said these negative points are very important and suppose there is a clubbing and there is a cyanosis probably you are, you are not doing a justice to your patients. That is about the general examination in very brief. Then when general examination is over, I always say that suppose somebody in the history you have got cough with large amount of expectoration recurrently occurring. Uh, from uh, so many years and if patient entered in your room, you saw his or her nails and you find there is a clubbing, your diagnosis is very clear. Probably you are going to see a case of a bronchitis. With the background of that history, with background of that finding, you may, you may think of a, a diagnosis very clearly. So, that is about the general examination.